I want to eat, but apparently some people didn't like me eating during the podcast. It's kind of fucking baloney to me, but yeah. I just think no one wants to see me winning, honestly. That's why. Yeah. I think they're like trolling or actual complaints? No, they were mad. Really? Yeah, they were mad. I, I don't know if you're being sarcastic. Like, were no, they, they genuinely were, they mad? Were, they were actually mad. Really? Yeah. <coughs> Fuck those guys. Sorry. Yeah. I commented back. said, watch your mouth. Really? All right, now I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> somebody said, yo, Wait. somebody said all the comments, they were like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who was Hang this on, dude? I, to, yeah, I want to fucking see Let me read comments. it. This is actually not even about your eating. This is just like a general, like, remember like the first time we had Jeff on? Like, his people, man, they are no joke. Right. What, they got mad that I laughed at Dude, the like, thing? honestly, <laughs> no, no, wait, this is great. <laughs> Jeff's knowledge is wasted on these fools. Start your own pod, bro. We need to go deeper. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what did you say? So I want to go deep? Like, that's like. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I commented back. I was like, watch your mouth. <laughs> That was actually uh, good. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, so it's funny. Like, do you know Jeff at all? Jeff. Perry? Yeah, I heard of him, yeah. Yeah, so he, Tell like. Stop being in the mic. Yeah, you can read those. Yo, things. who the fuck? But he has, like, his following is crazy, dude. Like, because he, he does he has have. Like a full following. He's, yeah, he has, yeah. like, a lot of, like, different. He has, like, knowledge on, like, different topics. And it's, yeah. like, it is interesting. Yeah. But hit, some of his following is, like, nothing I've ever experienced. Like, the yeah. way that, like. After the first podcast, like, the support that his got, the comments, we were getting DMs on our, like, gym page, like, yeah. Jeff's got to be a regular on the podcast, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. we've had some other people on that have, like, bigger followings, but, like, yeah. nobody's even been close. Like, his mm-hmm. are, his are, like, wh- like, it's cult-like. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. It's funny. It's, some of them are, like, like you know. Now, do you think they only said that because I was eating on the podcast that Jeff was featured on? Or because I was just eating in general. <laughs> I don't know. Tell homie to stop yeah. eating in the mic. <laughs> Everyone calls you homie. I, I know. Homie I think should eat before this, the pod. This, I think this should do good because I really oh, don't yeah. go on podcasts. So people will be like, fuck. Yeah. I, I've been on a few and they've done good. So yeah. I'm sure it'll do did good. You do, um, did you do uh, fucking the one with Nick? Yeah, Nick. No, I'm going to do one when I go down. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, not yet. It's kind of <clears throat> like, I feel like to hop on a podcast, you almost have to have like some sort of credibility that you've like done something, you know? Yeah. Ideally, you know what I mean? Because like, it, it's hard to like just bullshit if you've never done anything. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, you know, I feel like it depends. Like Nick's going to be able to like pull in like whoever he wants pretty much. Yeah. Like, like, cause like he, got, yeah, he just had, um, he had a famous actor on there. Uh, fucking McConaughey or yeah. some shit. Yeah. Who, who, who's Nick? Nick, Nick Bear. Bear. Uh, he's the CEO of VPN, the gotcha. company I'm with. But we're in it officially. Oh, yeah. We're live. All right. Well, back with another episode. Happy Power Podcast. We got Nathan French. What's up? He's a gym member here. You went to Westchester, not too far from the gym. Like I remember, you rolled up like day one. Yep. And. uh what, you're originally from where? I'm from, uh, like, Lebanon. Not many people know where that is. Like, oh, Hershey, dude, I, Pennsylvania. I to, yeah, I used to be to yeah. Lebanon all the time. I want yeah. good friends from Lebanon. It's, like, small little area. But, yeah, it's not far from Hershey, right? No, it's, like, probably 15 minutes. Yeah, so. everyone knows Hershey's Chocolate. Yeah. Hershey Park. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, like, a super small town. Not much going on. So, coming down here to, like, Power Build, it's, like, it's pretty – it's a relief because there's not many – hardcore gyms out there anymore Mm. it's really hard to find because my dad was a powerlifter and not many people know that that's kind of where i started um he was big into powerlifting like you know they would he he used to tell me stories they used to bang their heads off the bars and bleed on the forehead and west side shit yeah like the crazy shit the stuff i like (coughs) and like you know you go to these commercial gyms and they yell at you for dropping dumbbells like 25 minutes like i remember i was i was benching like 100 pound dumbbells and you know he was, like, I was pumped up. I was. I think I just got out of high school, um, and I dropped them on the floor. And some some like lady comes up to me and she's like, "You gotta like gently put them on the floor." I was like, "I just hit a PR." Like I was excited. And yeah. and uh, ever since then, uh, you know, commercial gyms just didn't do it for me. So I love coming to like s- stuff like this. No, for sure. Yeah, definitely environment way different. 
And yeah, you don't really get a lot of this. I mean, there's I think there's a lot of like smaller versions kind of popping up. Like I like how Conchi, like that's how, you know, we first started was like smaller. Now we kinda like jumped into a little bit bigger space, but it's definitely still rare. I yeah. mean most yeah, commercial gyms you can't fucking do anything. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just crazy too, like, um, to compare it, you know, going down and traveling to zoo culture going to power build here in uh philadelphia camp pressure area yeah, and you'll uh, offend him if you say this is philly yeah, is it, yeah it, this isn't this isn't philly but what what, what do you he's, classify it? he's huh? straight from what? philly so uh, like if you oh. if i say philly area or like something like if i even say philly, you like delco no i'm i'm from south philly i'm south from philadelphia shit, okay he says he's from like what schuylkill school that's yeah. that's not philly no <laughs> like that's I, a I never said i'm from philly I, if somebody asks me where the gym is, I'll be like Philly area. Yeah. Like we're right outside yeah, of Philly. Yeah, area. You got to include that area. I always say area. Because it's not Philly. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Trust I, me. Yeah. I, I had this group of kids come in yesterday. They said, um, yeah, we're from Philly. And then um, they like classified that they're from Willow Grove. I almost smacked them in the mouth. <laughs> it's just like you're not from Philly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. But it's not Philly. Yeah, that's not Willow Th- This isn't Philly. Oh, Willow Grove is yeah. Oh yeah, it's very very suburban. Very suburban. Is it? Yeah. I don't think it really. I mean, the been. areas that I've been in, the um the project areas are like, actually like pretty nice in Willow Grove. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but what? Yeah. What what up? What's up? Uh, I was I, I've never I I don't really leave like. People always ask me all these areas outside of like Philly. I'm like, listen, I go to Conchi, I go to King of Prussia, and then yeah. I go back home, which is in Conchi. That's well, it. I don't literally go anywhere. I don't know anywhere around here, and I've been living here for three. Willow years. Willow Grove is literally like five minutes away from Conchi. Really? Yeah, like you can get there very fast. Huh. Taking like Hector Ave. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but see, I have no idea. What I was saying was going back to the topic was basically I think like you're the product of your environment, okay. so. Lifting at commercial gyms, right? You, you know, you see like mostly average people, you know, that just kind of want to go through the motions and work out. And for me, I found that putting myself in like an area where you're surrounded by almost people like bigger, stronger, faster than you, or or on that same level, it's like you become the product of your environment. You're gonna get better and grow with those people because you're gonna look at those dumbbells that the guy next to you, he's like 20 pounds heavier. You're gonna be like, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, and, for uh, sure, and yeah. also too, like I'll go to the commercial gyms and they'll have like, oh, like the highest dumbbells are like a hundred tens. Yeah. You know, like once you hit hundred tens, if you don't ever go anywhere else, you'll be like, dude, I made it. You're, like, yeah, you're the you're the big dog. Yeah, you're the, you're the big fish in a small pond. Yeah, that's what I always try and tell people too, because we get that all the time about people who don't want to come here, not because they don't want to be here, like they're like intrigued by it, but they're scared and they they like they're complacent and like the LA fitness that they're in. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're repping the hundreds and they feel good. And like, you got, you know, people looking at them in, in LA fitness, but they kind of know if they come here, everyone's repping the hundreds. Yeah. That's facts. Like, yeah. That's not facts. everyone. I don't want to say that. See, we're already intimidating more people. Come here. <laughs> like but shit. like people, there's just, there's just more of a, you know, we have a more broad, like we have novice through super advanced here. So it's like, yeah, you're, you're probably not walking in the power build and you're going to be the strongest person. No, you're just not like Julius thinks he's strong. He's the 30th ranked all right, all right. strongest person at power build. Not in, no in the gym tonight. OK, first of all, there's not even 30 people in here right now, but probably like 26. Huh. Who do you think is the strongest in the gym? Pound for pound right now? Me. I mean, me. Um. I don't know. It's tough. There's multiple people. Obviously, you have Debo that comes through. He's like 200 pounds. He's going to total like 1,900 his next meet. You have Sean. He's he's big kid, but like the strongest in his weight class, like in the nation. You have – I mean, and then that's not even counting like if you talk about people who come and visit the gym. Dan Griggs, you just – you know him, Griggs? Yeah, yeah, I saw him. There's he's some strong kids. fucking deadlifted 1,000 pounds here at like RP8. Like <laughs> truly like – Dan is <laughs> like the apex fucking lifter. Like he has the biggest deadlift in like human history. Yeah. Raw in a meet. So we we like actually have the strongest dude deadlift wise to yeah. ever come through. And like he comes up like regularly now. You have Ashton yeah. who comes up. I don't know. It's just like there's always gonna be somebody stronger. So like if yeah. that deters you, 
you're, you're never going to, like, reach your potential. You know I, what I mean? I honestly feel like you need it. Like, I know a lot of people. Yeah. And obviously, like, you, you want to strive to, like, beat yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But how extended can that really go? You know what I mean? You, you're going to keep being yourself. I feel like you almost need people that are better than you, stronger than you, faster than you. In whatever category you're, like, training for or working for, you need people who are doing better than you so you can kind of – like, I want to be better than that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm going to out total CT within, like, a year and a half. Yeah. Just wait for it. It's okay. I hope. That's the goal, honestly. <laughs> my, yeah. For me, like, uh, just, like, when I did travel and stuff, I was just in Florida um, down with, like, Chris Bumstead. I, I got to train and meet him. Damn. And uh, not train with him, but meet him. Yeah. Um, train with Vaughn Walker, who's sponsored by uh, Chris Bumstead. Yeah. But seeing those guys – and being around those guys, even like Nick, Nick Bear, who I look up to a lot, um, you seeing how they train and how they take use of their time, their business, even with you, with your gym, all that stuff is like being a younger kid. Um, it's, it's cool. And it kind of sets me like in the right direction. Like I'm like, okay, I can take piece by piece. What, what, do, what do I want from that guy? How can I use the other guy to like help me? Um, you know set up my goals like oh, just yeah. gain certain <laughs> things that they do and try to implement that in your life and uh that's what i try to do like when i travel these places like that's one of the reasons why i started this bodybuilding prep because i wasn't really into bodybuilding before i kind of just ran and lifted weights um but i trained with vaughn walker and uh he's going to be a big name like in the bodybuilding industry and he already is but even bigger and also like seeing sebum in them just the discipline and and that's something i really wanted to to learn so that's why i'm doing the seven week prep and and honestly i'm just excited to see like what i learned from it that's why i try all this shit like the marathon everything it's just to learn new things about myself honestly yeah we got to get into the whole training protocol but no 100 percent. just to like kind of touch on everything you just said we were kind of more so like saying in the gym right you got to like surround yourself with like bigger badder people who are doing like more weight whatever that's great but it also applies in like every aspect of life business 100 percent. like surrounding yourself with people who think outside the box have businesses have successful businesses even had maybe they failed at one point in time and then they had success like that's how you really elevate yourself because if you're just surrounding yourself with like i don't know not to like say like common they're just people who aren't thinking about like attaining the next level or like thinking outside the box they're like accepting kind of like the social norms i guess you could say like you're not going to grow you know what i mean you have to like put yourself outside of your comfort zone whether that's like in real life social settings or in the gym or in any sport fucking triathlon whatever like you you looking up to nick that motherfucker has been like doing what the triathlon things like yeah. the iron what is, he does all he's kinds like, of dude, crazy he, he just did uh 200 mile races that's like, what i mean like and he, yeah that's like crazy. looking at people like that that's what's gonna like push you to do more yeah and because so. like i like to think too it's like you know we're we're all humans like every single one of us has the capability to do anything we we want if we put our mind to it and uh that's kind of why i did the marathon i never ran over two miles in my life i was like you know like i'm just gonna give it a shot see what I can make for myself and see what I can do it. And I believed in myself because I had the mentality that we're all built the same. Like we're all humans. We're all made to evolve. Yeah. If you put yourself in consistent pressure every single day to adapt, like the human body is made to adapt. If you make yourself adapt by performing, executing, being consistent every single day, you're going to reach that goal. So that was what I did for the marathon. And I weightlifted in the process. Like the day before um, I benched three, four or three, 315 pounds for four just to show people um that you could do that and run it like a good respectable marathon time like mine wasn't anything crazy i ran like a 320 which was like a 730 pace for 26 miles but i was 205 pounds i wasn't trying to win you know yeah. like i was just trying to do it all you know that's, that's, that's what I was my gonna goal say. so marathon is what 26 26.2 yeah damn yeah yeah it's crazy dude like i learned so much from it just because like we when we went to Texas, there's this back like country road that we ran on stones. It wasn't flat. It was yeah. hilly, windy, and it was crazy. Like, like I used to always watch his David Goggins clips. Like when his yeah. feet were bleeding, I was fucking. That was me. Like mile twenty, my feet were bleeding. They were numb, and I was like barely holding on. But one thing I did was 
I break in hard situations. I think you need to break it down into like micro uh, goals. So when my feet were numb and my feet were bleeding, I would say, all you have to do is take one step. If you can't take one step, like you have bigger problems. And that's what I focus on was taking one step, one step, one step. And that like, you know, the small goals, even though it became monotonous, that's what I needed to finish. And, and just having that, like, I think that applies to anything that you do. Like if you break it down into small goals, you look at the big picture. It's like, like if you, like you guys power lift, <coughs> someone told you, uh, when you first started lifting, Hey, go deadlift a thousand pounds. You'd be like, no, nah, like there's no way. But like, if they tell you like every single day what to do and work your way up to it, you would do it. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of like what I learned throughout the process, like the little <coughs> steps. Yeah, no, 100%. I think like when I first started lifting, now powerlifting has definitely evolved. Like some of the numbers that these guys and even these like kids are hitting are like absurd. But I remember when I first started, I think my numbers were maybe squatting like four, benching like mid threes because I was like benching every day because it's, I was a complete gym bro. <laughs> and then uh, I think my deadlift was literally like four not even five yet, maybe just below it. And if I, I mean, even back then, I think my like all time goals were like 500, 400, 600. And like, I surpassed them like rather quickly actually. And like at the time those were like, I hit these numbers, I'm done. I'm fucking, you know I mean? Those are like the ultimate. Now, I mean, now they're all like fairly easy for me, but like, it's also like even in today's standards, like they won't even be like the all time goals for people. Like Julius wants to hit like a fucking thousand pound squat, eight hundred pound bench. Not, uh, not, not that not, crazy. Not, not eight hundred pound bench. But, but like <laughs> realistically, like <laughs> in your eyes, what seven hundred squat? Wait, what, what are we talking? What Just like if, if somebody's in like general. your all time, like what uh, are your all time? Like, they're crazy. People people on this podcast, especially those fucking homies commenting, <laughs> aren't going to be able to fathom what I'm about to say, but. In sleeves, natural, um, 275 at, at maximum. I don't want to go to 308. I'm going to squat 900 in sleeves. I know it sounds ridiculous. I believe in you. Thank yeah. you. I want to bench 600, and um, I want to pull 1,000. 1,000? Dude, aim high. Dude, you have to. Seriously, people so, don't, people uh, don't realize. So just a quick 2,500-pound total. Exactly, at 275. <coughs> That'd be sick. I, it Wait, would be. Is, that, is that like world – World class. Oh, right. that, that would, would be, be, yeah, that would be a world record all time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not like no one would even come close in raw division. I'm trying to natural seventy five. I think two seventy five. The best is probably like twenty three something, like high twenty three hundred range. So it would be, it would be like, it would be like hundred and fifty pounds more than the best at the at the yeah time. Right and that's now. test it. No, actually, that's see, probably that, like that's untested. What was, that's what Tested, now you're talking like, let me see, who's who's the guy? I think it's Dennis Cornelius, and he was actually USAPL for the most part. He would do USPA. He squatted nine-something. Raw? Yeah. He did squat nine-something. He could bench mid-fives, and he deadlifted, I think, like eights. So, Thicker whatever. He, he, oh, yeah. He was fucking sturdy. Yeah. yeah. He was a monster. He's like one of my favorite lifters. Yeah. He was crazy. He'd like give hype as shit. Like his last meet I was at, I think was 2019 Raw Nationals. And like he was in the prime time, obviously. He like hit his like all time PR squat, went out through the front of the rack and just walked into the crowd like fucking hype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, it was fucking sick. Bro. And he like, he's pretty chill for the most part, but like he like went off then. Yeah. It was pretty dope. Yeah. Like I that. think that's like the, the shit like I think we need more today is like the, like kind of like I remember growing up, like just like hearing what my dad had to say about like powerlifting and just lifting in general. I was like, like, I mean, now it's all like pretty boy shit. Like it's all like just like posing and stuff, you know, which is everybody's niche. Like everybody has something that they like to do. But it's like I remember when I when I did hit 405, which was like it was, you know, it wasn't powerlifting for him. It was kind of ask him Gym off standard. the bench. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, fuck it. I'm just going to yeah. try and get it up. No, but yeah. I got it up. And Impressive, regardless, yeah. I was like. I was hype about it, and that's the shit that I like, like throwing around heavy weight, um, still looking good, but like I don't want to be a little brittle. Like yeah. I, I don't, I want to be like solid. Like I want a chick to be like, dude, that guy lifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> like, yeah. see me in a chair and yeah, he lifts. I mean, yeah, yeah that's, like, I agree. I think nowadays you definitely you're starting to see like a lot of people like some of the 
we've had some of these like younger influencer TikTok kind of crowd come in and like I'll see them I'm like my God I'm like this is that dude because like on Instagram they'll look like kind of like bigger and jacked and I see him like that's yeah. a fucking child like yeah. I don't know me it's like always been like bigger and stronger are the top priority like obviously I want to like maintain a like a good physique but yeah. like I don't know. I don't want to just be like skinny and lean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. But everyone has their thing. Nothing against it. But yeah. Yeah. Especially too. Like if you think I'm a, I'm big into like functional, like how's this going to help me in yeah. life? Like, uh, I think too, if, if you train like as a power lifter, if you train, you know, like hybrid athlete, kind of like how I do, I still lift heavy, but you know, I do endurance and stuff. Um, basically I think that you set yourself up for, you know, being able to function around the house so like little things that you don't even think about oh, also yeah. too like lifting heavy i think like pr helps um your future self like down the road like you're not going to age as as like people yeah. that never oh, touch a weight like, imagine never touching a weight like yeah. how would you look like in well you're years, gonna be that years? person that's like fucking hunched over exactly. brittle and like can barely walk across the fucking parking lot of like walmart yeah. you know what i mean like and, and they're and not even that old like and on top of that they've never drank milk in their life <coughs> yeah. yeah no calcium that's true you know yeah, I mean? I'm that's serious. crazy well i mean people don't realize like lifting heavy like resistance training like yeah you're gonna build muscle but it also improves like bone density strength and size yeah so you literally are creating longevity for yourself long yeah. term i'm you calling I mean? it now you guys could trademark <laughs> this average life expectancy in 50 years is going to be like 89 90. yeah I'm telling you just wait on it hang on so you think it's going to be higher higher than it is now i yes. don't know dude I, th I feel like shit's getting worse yeah. i mean diets so are worse people are fucking absolute couch potatoes they're all going to be on the metaverse living in fucking that metaverse shit's scary mark zuckerberg's reality of <laughs> whatever that is like really Finally, bro, we're gonna Finally. all look like jellyfish. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's scary. I think the whole the whole issue, as you know, contradicting because I do do social media, yeah. but I do it for a purpose, um, like literally to just inspire people, and because that's what, like what I used to look up to. Like that's I only follow people that I'm gonna get something out of. Yeah. Um, so kind of like I think the issue is with social media is people are getting like all these quick dopamine hits. Yeah. And like one thing I would did want to mention on this podcast is I think instant gratification. Oh, shit. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I think uh, we'll get right into it here. I think instant gratification is like the killer of dreams because if you want something right now, it's never going to happen right now. Like for you, like building your business or, you know, like even lifting, like think about it. Like if, if you would, like if you went into it thinking that you were going to succeed right away, you would have, you know, and you had that <coughs> expectation, you would have gave up because oh, it yeah. doesn't happen. You're going to fail first. You got to so fall yeah. in love with the process. Yeah. Like I think, and I think our phones gives us instant gratification. You look on there and there's a hot chick, you know, you don't even have to go to the bar and get her. It's like, Oh shit. You know, there she is. <laughs> yeah. Um, even with like, like working out or something like you see a dude who's jacked and you like the picture and you're like, Oh, I'm just going to get like that. And then they don't get like that and they give up. It's like, yeah. that's that instant gratification. And I think that's the killer <laughs> of all, all dreams. You just gotta, you gotta realize what it takes to get there. And I think a lot of people just don't want it bad enough or they just haven't learned that it takes time. Yeah. Misconception I think is like a lot of these people that you're looking at, whether they're strong, look good, successful, it seems like it's, it was quick for them, but like, you don't see the, like, like I, like even in, like for me with like the gyms and stuff like that, there was a fucking decade of groundwork laid before I even like considered opening a gym. And then even like, even after opening that, that shit got crazy. Cause like six months in COVID hit. And then all of a sudden I'm like, damn, it all, it might all be over quick. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like I had to be scary. Yeah. 100%. Like, you know, you, it's already high risk, right? Like gyms are not easy. Like I get messages all the time. I know everyone wants to open a gym. I know it like probably seems like the cool thing to do. Don't just open a gym. If you think it's going to be cool. Trust me, it is not easy. Even if I feel like, I feel like I've, I, I feel like I do pretty well with a lot of this gym shit. And it's still tough every single day. Like, it's not an easy, like, business to 
you know, thrive in. I mean, it's just one of those things, like, regardless of, like, crazy circumstances that we dealt with when we first opened, but, you know, there's a multitude of other things that go into it. You know what I mean? You just never know. So, but, yeah, it could have derailed me immediately. I could have been like, oh, didn't work out. This is hard. COVID, no money. Fuck, I'm out. <laughs> you know like, what I mean? Yeah. You'd have been like, dude, I'm done. Yeah. Right? But you didn't. No, yeah. That's the it's crazy like, part. You know, you, you have to build a, like, scrap. You have to build to, like, find a way, even when there doesn't seem like there's a way. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, I don't know. It's hard to not be cliche in, like, conversations like this. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, you just got to, literally, if your back's against the wall, though, I feel like that's when you really find out, like, what you're made of and, like, yeah. what, your, what your potential really is. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, that's, that's where we were. That's where I was. And, like, we just found a way. But, yeah. You know, and I'm sure, like, you you probably, like, were in a situation before that kind of, like, made you decide to keep pushing. Like, oh, you yeah. probably learned it from lifting, like, theoretically. Like, maybe it was something that, like, subconsciously you didn't give up on a lift. The next day you went out and hit that PR. Yeah. And maybe that if you would have gave up, you know, you learned something from uh, bouncing back after that lift to then apply it to the gym, if yeah. that makes sense. But no, training is absolutely a great tool for like learning discipline, resilience, all that. Yeah. I know it's helped me tremendously, like with, with school, like college and, and stuff. And then also like with social media and uh, just like, like really not giving a shit about what people have to say, but just focusing on my goals because you can go into the gym and like we were talking about earlier and just focus on what everybody else is doing. But if you just focus on yourself, you're going to have so much more like fun in the gym. Like yeah. actually really enjoy it. Cause it's easy to look at like, like you guys lifting heavy weight. And I'm like, yeah. well shit, like dudes dead lifting like 600, 700 pounds. And I'm like trying to just maybe get 600 for one. Yeah. Like, and I've been working my ass off to try and get it. But you know, there's always a story behind somebody like exactly. the, the oh, yeah. you know, like, you see the big dudes and it's like, you don't know how long they've been lifting. Like yeah. they, they've been in it for a while. So yeah, 100%. You definitely don't, you always see the process. And I don't think you realize like sometimes like everyone's, everyone has different circumstances and like life variables that like you're in school, you're doing triathlons, you're doing, you're traveling, you're doing all kinds of things. Like if you were just focusing on powerlifting, you'd probably pull 700 pounds. You know what yeah. I mean? Exactly. It's, it's one of those things. Some people just that, you know, they don't – I don't think they – they just don't think to that level. They're just seeing the highlight reel on Instagram. They're like, I should be doing that. Yeah. If they're not, when they think they should, then they get demoralized. You know, got to gotta put the work in. There's no there's no shortcut to that. No shortcut to that in any in any realm. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I wanted to get into that, though. We were just talking, like, as far as social media goes, highlight reel, you know, fucking yeah. influencers, all of this stuff. What Like, what, when did you, like, start – taken off and like blew up like yeah you were already kind of you had like a following when you came in here yeah because like, yeah i was like i came in here probably i had like 40k maybe yeah. um on instagram i had like i i started out on tiktok that's where i really caught like a lot of uh like people saw me through that just by you know i'd post like just like the normal clickbait shit where you take off your shirt you're shredded and like yeah. the, the, posing in the yeah, mirror yeah. yeah i did that stupid shit yeah. and then i was like i noticed that like i wasn't fulfilled from it like i was like dude like what's this doing for me like i'm just i'm just a dude that you know has a good physique okay like what's how far is that going to take me like what and i i wasn't fulfilled and it wasn't making me happy and so i was like i'm gonna switch up my content and i'm gonna be who i really am not focus on views and that's what really i noticed i gained a lot of traction from is just like focusing on what value i could provide from other people from what i learned yeah um and yeah so it started out on tiktok and then after i got over that stupid phase of just being like you know trying to get chicks and stuff because <laughs> i was single at the time <laughs> yeah. and uh um, yeah, and then focusing on more what value I could pr provide for them, and then then I started going getting into running, focusing on like the mental sides of it, and then also like uh, lifting and just overall just really like finding a good message in uh, social media rather than just being a face. No, yeah, because I feel like that's kind of oversaturated now, right? It's like yeah, even even if like you didn't have all the things, like because I feel like you're you're clearly different in the fact that like. You could just look at your social media, go through a few 
posts and like you're like oh this motherfucker's like doing something like yeah the, the triathlon see you like sh- shooting guns and shit like yeah. there's like at least like something like some of them i'm like i like check it out and i'll be like what's the poll like yeah you, you, you want to like see his nine thousandth selfie like yeah it's kind of yeah yeah it's it is weird too how that works like why people just like what it is that people love about just like a person there that's just jacked and shredded like what do they actually get out of that? Yeah, I guess I, it's motivation to look at, but, like, yeah. what are you – I don't know. I, I don't – Like, do you, do I, you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Like, Because, so, like, I'm the same way as you. Like, if, with people I'm following, it's got to be somebody that, you know, I know somebody that I have an interest in what they're doing. Like, to be honest, like, outside – like, more so even outside of the gym, like, probably business-wise. Like, that's, like, I've kind of, like, gravitated towards that of late – the last e- like the last even five years to be honest um and then obviously i follow a lot of power lifters if like if i meet somebody and like at a meet like i follow them like if they're yeah. like yo what's up and like you know they message me or they like tag me in a photo that we took i'll follow them you know what i mean like show support to people who are supporting me or the gym or whatever but i don't know like a lot of the people that i see like have these huge followings I'm like i don't know like they don't really bring much to the table it's yeah interesting that like i, I don't know it, it's probably what you said though it's probably like people that want to look like them or yeah something like that uh, but. i think i think one thing that i learned and i'm very glad that i i never had that mindset was no matter the following no matter what numbers displayed on that screen i will never treat anybody differently than what they are as a human yeah i think sometimes people get caught up like in social media like you you see somebody with a large following and you instantly like some some people think it matters like yeah. it really doesn't what no. the what the hell is this bullshit like this doesn't matter i could throw this out the window yeah. um and i know there's people out there that work a lot harder than me i know there's people that lift harder than like me and that's stronger than me it just so happened i put it out there um yeah. and and i put out like when i put stuff out there I, for that reason, I make sure that it's going to help somebody. Um, and that's, I don't know, that's just kind of my mindset with it all. Yeah, why do you think that is? Like, Because you are, like, one of the most humble kids I've come across. I met a lot of people, like, in this fitness industry, young, old, and everywhere in between. Some of them have a million followers. Some of them have a couple hundred thousand. Some of them have whatever. And I feel like you're, like, one of the most, like, chill, humble people. Like, I, nobody, like... I don't think anyone in the gym would ever be like, oh, like Nathan's like an influencer or something like that. Like influencer name just even has like a little bit of a yeah. negative perception. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> a- you're like the most like real down earth dude. Like why do you, why do you, like how did you end up kind of like staying there? Or, you know, is it upbringing, parents? What do you got? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, came from a small town, you know, Lebanon, Hershey area. Or, I mean, there's fucking. Not Philly. Yeah. Yeah, not feel like, like we have Amish, like horse and buggy and yeah. shit. Like I have to, I passed two on my way here. Yeah. It's like, God damn it, get off the road. Um, but no, nah, it's just like my my dad and my mom have always like my whole family were construction business, worked hard, blue collar guys, and and um, my mom worked at her job for thirty years, and she just my family distilled in me that basically like you treat everybody as if you want to be treated like like uh, that saying you treat how you wanted to be treated and um i guess what kind of like really said it for me was i never looked at myself as somebody that is better than anybody else but more of like how can i become somebody to help like my future like family or help my future like my current family now, like how can I, what is my duty to do that? And, uh, that's really all I focus on. I could give a shit about my, like, like influencing thing. Like I do that. I care about it because like, I I really do love like my followers and stuff and I want to portray a good message to them. Um, but I'll never ever look at my phone. And even if I meet somebody, I'm never like, I'm an influencer. Like I, I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, I'm one of you guys that just, I, I just get after it. If you follow me, we have the same mi- mindset. Yeah. Like, I, like if you follow me for that reason, we have the same mindset. I just think being humble is the best way to do it. As soon as you get like an ego on you, you kind of lose <laughs> your value of like what you're doing it for. Like what's the ego for? Cause we all die six feet under, but it's how you're remembered. Yeah. So damn, we got, there it is. That's a, 
stamp that as like our real right there. That's good. Yeah. More people need to hear that shit. Huh. Let's clap it up for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's clap it up for that. I, I can get deep. <laughs> no, that's good. It's and it's yeah. well, it's like I don't know. Like I feel like you just don't like hear like especially like not that you're like super young, but like you're a younger guy like. Most people don't really even speak how you speak. You know? Yeah, no, it's crazy. I, I met a, a chick in um, <laughs> in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. When I, I no, it was Fort Lauderdale, but I went to Miami. Um, I met her and and she was twenty eight, uh, and she she like we were talking it up, you know. Yeah. Was, you know, doing the thing, <laughs> um, and uh, she's like, "How old are you?" And I'm like, "I'm twenty two. And she's like, oh, "I'm twenty eight. I was like. <laughs> Um, no, but it's yeah, like, it's one of those things where she was like, if she was respectful and she's just like, Hey, like you talk more mature than most of the kids that, or most of the adults that I've talked to. And I was like, I, in my mindset, it's just like, I guess it's just how I was raised. And like, yeah. I, I always hung around people older than me because yeah. I, I, you know how it is. Like, I think you're the product of your environment. Like I can tell you guys, like you guys hang around each other. You guys are both like have the same mindset. It's like the same. Julius same didn't shit. always. <clears throat> I yeah. kind of, I'd say. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Pulled him right from South Philly. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You, you weren't like, into lifting? like. No, no, I was, I was into lifting. Um, his hair used to be gelled. I, no, no. Shirt off gelled. all the fucking time. You didn't, you know. Maybe, maybe that, but not, not <laughs> Stringers every goddamn day. Um, no, I mean, I just, I guess I didn't really have this type of enthusiasm and wanting to kind of be the best possible self I could be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, until I really start coming to Power Build, kind of getting a new environment. Like, from my high school and um, when I went to college, I only went to college like two years. Um, dude, I'm not I – don't, I haven't talked to anyone from my high school or college probably in like five years. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like I kind of had to separate myself completely from that group only because I hear about like literally at least like three people a year die in my neighborhood at least where i'm from you know what i mean yeah. and it's almost like to the point to where i, I don't want to hold on to that at all because i don't want to have any like emotional response to people who i know never like gave a shit about me or anything like that you mm-hmm. know i don't know i just feel like when you grow up in an area like that you really have to make a deciding factor when you like get of age if you want to kind of continue that circle or you want to <laughs> kind of do your own thing and yeah. make some type of progress, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a product of your environment. Back to that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Though. But with that, doesn't mean you have to stay in that environment. Like, yeah. you grew up, maybe you had some not-so-good company at times. Yeah, I used to be a fucking gangster, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, th- where does that lead you? You know what I mean? Like, you just said. You just said, like, people are dying, getting oh, yeah. into trouble. Dude, this this kid literally that lives, like, four houses down from me died um i think it was like three or four days ago he fucking got kidnapped they found him all bloody in the car it's crazy it's just like i don't know it's just wild that's why it was like as soon as i hit like 18 19 and i started going to college i was like fuck that i'm out you know what i mean like i'm not doing it nope not gonna catch me in that hood yeah i think fortunately like i i never had that but i respect anybody that came out of that you know what i mean like yeah it it tell it like to make the decision to make the harder decision to get out of there because it's hard to begin with to get out of something that you never really had much of um and then go make something for yourself is i I respect that um like i i can't like i said my family has only been like really supportive and they helped me like have a good mindset and everything and um but yeah it's i think too like getting out of your hometown is important yeah for me traveling like because you realize what is out there, like yeah. like how many opportunities <coughs> out there. Like if I wouldn't have went to Westchester, like I would never met you guys. I wouldn't be sitting on this podcast, like yeah. crazy no, shit. No, like, that's that's actually something I used to like harp on a lot. It was probably more so when I like first kind of got out of my hometown. Like, you know, shout out to the Skook, love it. But like at the same time, most of the people that grow up there, they stay there. They end up working in one of the like warehouses, or like I said, I was telling you earlier, like maybe go to the military you know law enforcement something like that but if you want to like do something somewhat different it's like there's not very many people that have like that have from my area and it's you know again lo- like all my all my friends growing up love them to death still so still talk to most of them like i had like some really good friends don't see them as much as i'd like to 
But it was good for me to kind of get out of that that circle to kind of see a little bit of like a different future. You know what I mean? Like, and for me, it wasn't even anything crazy. It's not like I went from like Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania to like California or Texas or Florida. Like I literally just moved like an hour away, surrounded myself with some different people. They were doing a little bit more, some different things. Um, and like they would like, is like Rob, Dana, Austin, Flag North Fail crew. You probably like all heard of them. And it was just like seeing them do their thing, create a business from scratch. It was like eye opening to the point like I can do some shit too. And then eventually taking like taking myself out of like the Reading area because like Reading not not crazy either. Like you don't really want to be there. Moving down here to the Philly area, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> You know, surrounding myself with even more people who are doing different things and kind of creating this community that we now have, like Power Build. And now it's like people come to us and it's like it's like created this like kind of synergy of like, I don't know, the fitness stuff, just business, you know, everything. I mean, yeah. it's like it's been awesome. So you, you, you do that when you get out of your uh, comfort zone, you get out of your hometown you know, you come down, like, Philly's close. There's a lot of people here. It's a big city, like, even though we're right outside of it. There's know. definitely good parts of Philly, too. I will yeah, say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Philly, there's a, you know, a lot going on. There's good and bad, like any major city, but more opportunity as well. Yeah. So if you, if you don't give yourself – if you don't allow yourself the opportunity, more opportunities aren't going to ever come. Like, exactly. they're not going to – opportunities don't come find you, very rarely, unless you put yourself in position – you know, to potentially see more opportunities. Like if you stay in your hometown forever, you're like, I don't know, maybe, maybe this will happen. No, it's not. It's not gonna. It's not yeah. just gonna happen. Like you have to go out and at least put yourself in position. You know, what I mean, it's like getting lucky. You yeah. don't really get lucky. You work hard enough, and then all of a sudden, the luck kind of starts to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> facts. I think I think luck is luck is almost like when hard work and opportunity meet. Yeah. Um. And people from the outside, they don't see the hard work or they don't see, yeah. like, that luck come in. They just, Or they see the luck, but they don't see the hard work. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, I think all of this that we talk about, too, it's like people see a very brief um, oper- or a very brief vision of what's going on and they make assumptions. Yeah. And they don't actually see what it took to get there. Like, for you, like, I could just be like, oh, you know, he just took a chance and – did well with the gym but in reality you probably have a hell of a lot of like a, a good story behind that you yeah. know what i mean so i think uh just like realizing that everything you do is going to be hard if it's worth it yeah. if it's easy it's probably not worth it unless you're lucky like, i mean and, and even like how many like i can't even think off the top of my head of like a even myself or somebody i know that like just got lucky like yeah anything that would even be coined as like man he kind of got lucky like no there was this happened he did this they did this she did this like there was all of these things that led up to the stumble into that lucky moment yeah well i think too when people say oh like that's lucky it's yeah. almost like they're trying to make themselves feel better as, as of yeah, why they can't no, yeah. why achieve they don't it. it yeah 100%. exactly like when people are like um i remember like going back to my hometown people be like Oh, you know, you got lucky with social media. It's like, maybe I did get, uh, maybe a little luck played into it. But also, I put out video after video every single day. You're when, consistent. Yeah, consistent. And I never, I think the worst thing you can do is, and what I learned through all this is, you need to learn how to block out the opinions of others. Yeah. If, you, if you always focus on other people's opinions, you're never going to be happy. Um, because you're going to live in their life. You're going to live in their head. You're not going to live in your own head. You just focus on you and, and you manifest your own destiny because if you just focus on what other people think, you're going to live their life, not yours. And, the, and, and like, as you're doing more and more, you have to kind of remind yourself of that yeah. more and more. Like in your case, like more popularity, more followers, yeah. more opportunities. There's with that comes like, more naysayers, more haters, yeah. more trolls, like, yeah, like more people that are maybe just trying to pull you down. And, and like, maybe they're even like snakes in the grass. You got to like, I, like, I, I see that. Like, I don't know with the gym, like 
I see that from time to time. Like people who come in, they it's like I know they like kind of maybe want to get involved. Not to say like we're fucking doing anything crazy around here, but like you know, people want to be a part of it to an extent. And I'll see them like just doing some shady shit to like kind of get a little closer, yeah. Or, like, oh, yeah. get more involved. And you know, it, it's it's I I can only imagine it like, kind of like escalates as you kind of get more and more popular and yeah. the following grows and whatever you're doing different opportunities you know yeah bring uh, a lot more uh you know potential negativity as well so. yeah i think too you can kind of tell when someone's uh like when i went to la i kind of i kind of could tell when people I left my car parked right out front it's it's, it's good Dude, yeah. we pretty much own this building uh, <laughs> no we don't <laughs> but uh, when I was in L.A., one thing that I noticed is people out there just seemed uh, like fake, like yeah. very surface level. Like we're having a good ass conversation right now out there. There's no chance we could do that. Yeah. Like it was always like, what what do you have to offer me? What's your social media look like? All that bullshit. Like I could care less about that when I was out there. And but that's what they valued. And I was like, dude, I got to get out of this place. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't for me. Um, and I, I found like when I went to Texas, like. I love Texas. I was dope. You guys were just in Texas, yeah. right? We were just there. All the hit all the gyms up, stuff like that. Texas was sick. I like also here, dude. Like everybody here is awesome, um, and uh, yeah, just like you can really tell when somebody has bad intentions. I'm getting better at like figuring that out because someone like good at, like if someone's coming to you and they're genuine, you know that they're gonna want like they're gonna want a good mutual benefit. Um, but someone that's just like you said, a snake in the grass, you can kind of tell because, like you said, you'll, they'll yeah, try. I feel like once you kind of experience it once, <coughs> then you, uh, you, you easier to identify for sure. Like, yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm also like, you know, not that I'm like standoffish. Yeah. But I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little more like apprehensive to kind of like, you know, I don't know, uh, extend myself to somebody as quickly as maybe I used to or bring people in who maybe I just be like, yeah, cool. Come join us or like whatever. Like, I don't know. Like I, I don't want to, I don't want to associate with fake people that yeah. like, in my opinion, like being fake, that's the worst quality. That is the worst quality. Like not even close. So me, I don't I like whatever you're following. That's cool. Obviously with having a brand, you want to have people associated with you that have followings to help market and influence whatever. But I, I can like, that's secondary. I want to like I want to bring people in who are real, who have something of some type of value to offer. You know what I mean? Like outside of just like making a post and promoting a product. Like, you know, like actually work your ass off in the gym, or actually be like competitive, or just compete, or have some type of message that people can actually benefit from, rather than just like, cool, you take a bunch of pictures and they get a lot of likes and views and whatever. I don't know. I feel like there's not as much value in that as people think. Even even in the sake of like a brand, like I don't know, there's just real nothing trumps real in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. Longevity it, wise too, like I see it a lot in the fitness industry as well. It's like you'll see a lot of people, which in my opinion, it's like whatever. People kind of use each other as like stepping stools to go above. Yeah. Um, but then you have some people, like just like evil people, they'll use you as a tool to get to the next level but while they're getting to the next level they just fucking kick you in the face and try to <laughs> push get, you down. get you a little yeah. further down yeah. you know what i mean yeah i don't know you see, you see it so often 100 percent. yeah i think uh because i know we wanted to talk about this too like um the, the whole fitness industry too like because i'm kind of involved in it i wouldn't say i'm like anything big i you know i just i'm in there like, I, I kind of understand what's going on because I was around a lot of those <coughs> those bigger names. Um, one thing I don't like about it is that it just seems like a drama fest. Like, whatever happened to just being like, yeah, I'm going to get after it, like, support everybody. But now it's all about, oh, what brand are you with? Or, you know, what, it's just so click like clicky. clicky I don't like uh, it. It's just stupid. It's, I don't know. Yeah, definitely superficial. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you were hitting on, like, with the L.A. crowd a little bit. I definitely can see that. Um, you do see, like, I don't know. I just feel like there's, like, some people I see, they, like, do, like, a collab. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I know these motherfuckers never even spoke to each other. Before, <laughs> but they're like, they're like, oh, you got 100K? I got 100K. All right, let's make a YouTube video. And, like, it's some bullshit video. It's like, what? Like, yeah. I don't know. It just, like, no brings no value, no information. Like, 
maybe a little bit of entertainment value, I guess. But like, yeah, I don't know. Like that shit to me is like the cringy stuff. That's yeah. just like I don't know. Like you can do it organically. Like yeah. I don't. I mean, it might be a little harder, but yeah, I think you're gonna have more longevity. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna be around more. Like because you, like speaking like directly to you, like you actually have something to offer. Like yeah. you're out doing things. You're actually like motivating people to try different aspects of fitness. Like you're letting people know you can do multiple styles of like fitness and training and have success with it. So that, that alone, like, I don't know anyone else that's doing that. Like in your age kind of group, that's like yeah, this kind of new, the new, uh, you know, the younger generation kind of. Yeah. Like so. I kind of, I kind of learned and uh, like I said, I really looked up to Nick because that's kind of like yeah. he was a savage. Like I, I was like being from my hometown too. Like he grew up, uh, I think it was like 15 minutes away from me. Yeah. And my family, he was his uncle was my gym teacher. Dang. So like yeah, we like crazy shit. Like and then I got sponsored by him, but it was just like one of those things where, you know, I think it's important to idolize somebody. Like even when I come in here, I see you guys powerlifting. Like I look up to that, and. But I never tell myself, like, I'm going to be that person. But to have, like, similar similar qualities and to follow them because you want to have that because you believe that that will help you in the future, I think that's what social media is good for. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just kind of, like, figuring out what you want to be in the future um, and use the people that you follow to help you get there. Yeah. Um, you can use it as a positive or a negative. Yeah. Social media. like. Yeah, I mean, there's negative bullshit out yeah. there. It's everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, like I said, with fitness, it's like just like drama. Like, just, I don't know, man. I just don't understand. Different times, man. Different times for sure. I feel like nowadays you're seeing more and more kind of like, I don't know, like I mean, we were talking a little bit earlier before I think we even got on like the air and it was like, some of these brands are just like no substance to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the owner or founder, or whatever has like a big name. They're like, cool, let's mm -hmm. make this brand. And it's like, it's just them. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, I don't know, not, nothing against it. Right. Like, I mean, if you want to like kind of make a business out of it, that's great. But like, I feel like at, at some point there's gotta be like some type of value you offer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with us, it's like the training, the gym, like the information we try and get out. I don't know. I feel like that will bring the business. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just providing the value, the yeah. information, the entertainment, the content that will, that will kind of bring back the good business. So you don't, I don't know. I feel like some people, they kind of, they forget that part and they might have some short term success, but then all of a sudden they fall off and there's just the next person. Yeah. Like just focusing <laughs> on, I think you focus on value first of the people and the money will come. Yeah. And, uh, but still like, we talked earlier, like money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah. Like you could have all the money in the world. Think about it. If you had all the money in the world, I'm sure you could still look back at your life and be like, there's still something that's not fulfilled. Yeah. Because in reality, that money can say you, uh, say you go out and buy a Lamborghini, right? Your dream car, you go buy your dream house. You, you buy everything that you ever wanted in your life. Theoretically speaking. Well, now that you have everything, what is it that you actually makes you happy? Like, what do you actually want? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you have everything that's the best without really having to work for it, like, you know, what is it mean to you? Yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like if you have the best of the best, what can you do from there? You yeah. Know? I mean, I feel like materialistic things never really do it. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like I've never, never had a Lamborghini still waiting on a dream house, but <laughs> You know, I remember when I, I, like, I bought a brand new WRX when I was, like, 20, I don't know what I was, 24, 23. And at the time, like, that was, like, a fucking Lamborghini for me. Like, I'm like, this shit is fucking sick. But, like, with within, like, a few months, I was already like, ah, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, like, I wanted something else. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, in that regard, I feel like, like, human nature, like, you're always going to kind of want, like, almost the next best thing. Like, you shouldn't really, like, base your happiness on, like, things you have yeah like for me the one thing i've been trying to do of late because i think i get caught up in sometimes just like constantly trying to like get to the next level and it's not necessarily in like a monetary way but like um even just like i don't know like getting the gym to the next level um 
whether it's like what we have in the gym, finishing the gym, like the gym's not done. I'm like always like, oh, I got to get this next thing done, next thing done. It's like I, I still want to do that, and that's never going to change. But I was like losing – I was like – I'm like – I was like losing my mind in the process because I wasn't in enjoying the process like at all. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I wasn't even enjoying like just coming in here and remembering like, yeah, like my, my day is going to be like, I got like these three clients. Like I'm going to have to like deal with this and this with the gym. It's like, that's what I was like fucking hoping for and like dreaming of for years and years. And I'm like, now I'm here and I'm like constantly just like, always looking at the next thing it's like I, I need to like stop and like have like more gratitude and like at least I get to I'm walking into my gym to train my clients and like make money doing so like I can pay for a roof over my head I can pay for food on my plate that like That's I should dream. be more happy yeah like I, I like and I feel like we all get kind of caught up in that it's like whether it's in a sport or like in a business venture or whatever like you can get caught up in like kind of always just like fucking getting the next step getting the next step you like lose yourself you lose your happiness in the process like yeah. I, i've been like there's been multiple times where i've been like that it's like i don't know i was like talking to one of my clients the other day about that he's like a, he's self-employed he's like a lawyer and like he's successful but like he's like he was in that same mindset we were like dude our session went three hours and we were like it was more so like a fucking like therapy <laughs> session it's more like a therapy session for both of us man and like we didn't cry at all, but it was enlightening, right? Like, it was, like, it was great talking to, like, him. Like, we always have good conversation. We've been working together for a while. He's getting strong as fuck, too, by the way. But, um, <laughs> no, it was, like, it was, like, cool to, like, hear, like, kind of somebody who's, like, we're similar age. We're in totally different, like, you know, categories as far as, like, business. But he's, like, kind of, like, the same mentality. He's, like, you're always looking for more, always looking for more. And you kind of, like, lose, like – that gratitude a little bit. It's not that I'm not thank. It's not that I wasn't thankful for anything. It was just like I was like unhappy, really, day to day, because I was like always oh, just like, cool. We accomplished something. Cool. We like hit a new milestone. Cool. The next one. The next one. The next one. So, balancing that, it's definitely been a little bit difficult. But like I've been trying like to be mindful of that on a daily basis. I feel like a lot of people are guilty of that. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. went on a fucking TED talk there. I um I feel like there's definitely like a happy medium that you have to find and i yeah. think the dynamics of it like kind of change as you get older like i feel like when you're younger like even though you're so hungry to kind of achieve that next goal or like get what you want to get once in a while you still have to kind of like take a step back and just look at what you've done you know what i mean and yeah. i feel like as you get older and older you could kind of do that more often but i feel like <clears throat> if you're older you're not going to be genuinely happy if you don't have anything that you still want to do you know what i mean I feel like life without any type of like chase isn't really worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's true. I think one thing um, for anybody that's listening that's in college or whatever, um, I think the only thing that I did a bad job of when I was uh, in college was I was so focused because this happened like during COVID. So I was in college during COVID and we were away from our friends and, and I was at home. So I was like, really grinding out content every single day trying to like make this my my future mm. and uh, granted without doing that i wouldn't be in this position but when i went back to college i never got out of that hustle so i didn't go out i, I didn't go out at all um maybe actually maybe once once every two months maybe once a month if that and i noticed that like my friends wouldn't ask me some of my friends i wouldn't ask me to go out anymore because they knew the answer yeah. like, he's probably not gonna go out he's probably got other shit going on and it's one of those things where i don't regret it but i i think like looking back i can learn something that maybe i do need to take a step back and like enjoy my time a little more because like now i i try to find time to spend with my family more um rather than just go travel everywhere yeah. or uh, just like because i'm i'm a very i'm sure we're all like this like we're very hyper focused on a goal where you kind of become selfish in a way yeah and uh it's i learned that you kind of have to have a good balance because you know you want to have friends you want to have family with you supporting you and they're not gonna 
necessarily be there for you 24 7 if you can't show it back you know yeah, no. and that's that's something that i i struggle with yeah. like honestly like not really with my family but my friends i think just because i'm so focused i don't really i don't i don't hang out as much as i should with them yeah um just because i'm so like i'm just like let's do this you know just trying to get all my shit like but like what you're into i know you post that one photo yeah kind of broke the internet oh yeah yeah, yeah, I, uh, well, I spent, dude, people don't understand how much Iron Man stuff is. Oh, no, dude, I know, like, the bikes are, like, the, fucking absurd. I spent right? five grand on a bike. <coughs> the yeah. suits are two grand a piece. Uh, just to sign up for the race, it's $900. Damn. Yeah. Um, what else? There's the other shit, like, the swimming shit. Uh, but, yeah, the biking, so, crazy story. A lot of people don't know this about me. I used to race bike. Like um, BMX? Or yeah. Like? Oh, yeah, like, being at, like, dirt track, I used to, like, throw whips, and, like, Damn. yeah, I was all into that. I raced uh, York, bumps and berms, if you guys are familiar <laughs> with that. Uh, but, yeah, we used to race, like, dirt jumps and shit. I got into mountain biking, would ride down, like, mountains and just bomb hills. So I'm pretty, like, well-equipped for biking. Yeah. Um, running, uh, like, I feel solid, too. But the swimming, dude, I... Swimming is one of those things where if you get tired, you fucking sink and you're dead. Yeah. So that's the thing I'm nervous about. That's yeah. all I care about. I, I, I think theoretically I could go out and do an Ironman right now. I could finish it. Not saying it would be a good time, but I could do it with if I could swim. Like right now, like if you told me to go do an Ironman right now, I couldn't do it. But if I could swim, I think I could do it. Uh, so what is the swim in it? 2.4 miles. Like think of, like if you see those cargo <laughs> ships, like when you're yeah. chilling on the beach. Those are probably like maybe 2.4 miles. Really? Two, yeah, 2.4 miles I'm is far. I'm never making that. It's far. I wouldn't do it. I would need something, a raft, a motor. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's what I, that's what I, that's what that's what I'm thinking. Like I'm getting nervous. And right it, now, how are you training for that? Like just pool laps? Like Honestly, I'm not training as much as I should right now, but um th- like so the plan is after I finish this uh bodybuilding prep, I'm going to just go 100 percent in on uh swimming and i'm gonna focus on swimming and then everything else i'm gonna uh like prioritize after i get my swim down so what are the conditions of the water when you run this or is it just random it's just whatever happens so it could be like really fucking. so it's just like a set date yeah where where, where, where do you like where do you where are you gonna do it uh, Florida. Florida. So yeah. like, oh, it'll be in the ocean. Uh, ocean, yeah. <coughs> Damn, Have, where's yeah. the Where's the uh, bodybuilding show? Uh, Alpha Land. So, to Summer Shred. Yeah, Summer Shred. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Who's that? Who? Oh, who's he? He's one of our photographers. Yeah, yeah. I know, sure. There you sure. go. Yeah, that'd be dope. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm super fucking nervous. But that's the thing, like. I have this mentality. It's not a good one. Like when I go, when I have something that I want to do, I don't think about it. I just sign up for it. Yeah. And then I think about it. Cause then it's like, Oh shit. Now what you, you gotta do it. Yeah. Like I think people get paralysis of analysis. They think too hard about something and it prevents them from doing it. So when I signed <laughs> up for the Ironman, I gave myself no other decision. I was like, I'm doing this, this date and we're going to make it work. Same with bodybuilding prep. <laughs> Literally just went down to Florida I was like, dude, screw it. I'm going <laughs> to sign up for a uh, bodybuilding show. So just, You just decided that last week? Yeah. That's bold. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Just why not? Fuck it. Like, people people <laughs> think too much about shit. That's yeah. why they don't do anything. I think. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Like, think about, like, if you would have thought about everything you had to do to build this gym, you'd probably been like, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like for sure. If I would have known everything, <laughs> I would have been like, fuck that. Yeah. That's too much. <laughs> Yeah, but it goes back to uh, if you put your back against the wall, you'll find out what you're really made of. Like, yeah, that's that's kind of the only way I feel like, at least now for me, I don't know. That's the way I do it. Yeah, maybe it's I don't know if it's like the most like business savvy, but yeah, we're doing it. We got to get into these questions. You got some on IG? Yeah, I can run up some. Let's see what they are. We actually got one from our boy, Sue. He <laughs> said, will Nathan ever step on stage and go for his pro card? Oh, shit. Uh, honestly, it depends. 
So I think uh, I think depending, I'm trying all these things to see what I like, to see what I actually think I'll settle down and keep pursuing. And long term. Uh, yeah, long term. <coughs> that's what I think. That's what I need to do. I don't think it's good. Well, for me personally, I don't think it would be good for me to just like never experience anything and just focus on one thing. That's why I'm trying to just like focus on a bunch. Yeah. See what I like. Um, yeah, I feel like now is the time. You know, you're younger. Yeah. Why not? <clears throat> uh, let's see if there's. Uh, someone said, "Would you would you ever try an ultra marathon? Do you guys know what ultra is?" It's like anything over 50 miles or (coughs) anything over 30 miles running. I think I am. My plan is next year I'm going to do, I'm going to do like, my goal is to run 100 miles. Wait, so like, explain this to me. You want to run 100 miles, right? Yeah. Straight? Like, yeah, Yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, how how often do you take breaks? I mean, you, I think every race is different, but pretty much you can't stop like you can stop to refuel like eat but you can't like stop like completely and, and just start the next day and how so long how long does that normally take like i think a good uh, time? i think like 12 13 14 hours i think sheesh wait sorry i you could s- be wrong but <laughs> so when you stop to eat right yeah can you like stop at like a restaurant no, <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Like, can you like have a seat? Yeah, there's restaurants on course. I'm stopping at a restaurant. They got like hot dog out. stands or like anything like that. Food trucks. Like they just got yeah, a guy well, like I, throwing I, fucking I food think, at you. I think like a popular race is Leadville. I thought about doing that, but I need like I would need a crew like because these people doing these races like, uh, you know, you watch these documentaries and they have like these whole like filmmakers there like filming them and then they have this whole team watching them, making sure they're okay. Like f- rest stops, they have food for them already. Like if I did that myself, like I, I don't know how I'd do it. Yeah. yeah that'd be difficult. Like to come to a rest stop and, and have nobody there to support you. That'd be, you know, that'd be kind of tough. Like yeah. you're, you're on mile 75 and you're ready to oh, give up man. and, and you're just like no food, nothing. I, I don't know. So, so that's so, all like pre-planned. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like all these guys have, have like, people supporting them so i think that's what i would need but i'm definitely gonna do it like i'm I'm gonna do it that's one thing i i'm gonna do and i'm not gonna think about it because if i think about it i won't do it yeah so like i'm just gonna sign up for it and be like (laughs) fuck it uh yeah they have i did a metric century which is 62 miles (coughs) i bought 62 miles that wasn't that bad honestly uh the marathon was by that was probably the hardest thing i ever did but uh he did he's yeah he does like the ruck the rucks <coughs> yeah I, that's more of a military thing but i would try it yeah um but I, honestly would you do you think you'll ever run like do, would you ever run or no no the only time i ran was in basic and that's because you had to really yeah i'm just like I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Never experienced a runner's high. Like, I don't know. It's just like now too, being like 245 pounds. It's like, (laughs) like shit. it it would be rough. Yeah. I respect it. And like, I'm not going to say like, I would never get into it, but it just, I don't know. Right now it's like goals, like always bigger, stronger. And it's like running doesn't really yeah exist with that very well bigger stronger faster did you watch that document <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. i want to watch it I, I didn't actually watch it's it. good um yeah it's good definitely worth a watch um this one's good what like <clears throat> basically how do you maintain muscle while doing like iron man training uh so basically well, for everybody that's asking, um, I, I did do Ironman training, but I'm not full Ironman training. But I think, honestly, I think it's going to be easier to keep on muscle during Ironman training than it is marathon. Because marathon's like, dude, you're running so much. Like, it's like, just like, I think, like, triathlon training, at least you're swimming. So you're getting resistance of the pool, biking. You're also getting strength in your legs. Like, it's not impact. Running is like, strictly yeah. like that's a little it's 
impact, like high impact all the time on your body. Um, but what I did was, I mean, I would come in here and I would just lift heavy <clears throat> because I think truly your muscle will stay if you give it a reason to stay. Yeah. And that's what I learned from following people like Nick Bear, uh, Cameron Haynes, uh, all those guys. Like they don't go into the gym and they, they don't lift 135 and no. that, you know, they're <clears throat> training heavy. Yeah, Nick maintains like a lot of muscle mass too. Like, yeah. What is he like 215, 220? He's big. Even up to like what? Yeah, he's like he's a big dude, right? Yeah, in person <laughs> he's huge, yeah. Yeah. And he's um, fucking running for days on end. Like. Yeah. But if you think about it, it makes sense. Like why would your muscle like evolutionary you think of it in terms of why would your muscle leave if you're putting a, a load on it? Like yeah. your body's probably like, Oh shit, I gotta protect myself. I'm gonna yeah. keep that muscle there. No, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the energy expenditure aspect, but <clears throat> if you're actually, like, fueling your body properly, you know, nutrition and yeah, making sure you're actually getting proper recovery. Yeah. So, I'm curious, how many calories do you eat a day? <laughs> Somebody asked me? me. I'll answer it then. But um, As a power lifter. Honestly, lift, it's many? like, I used to, like, make it a point to get, like, 5,000. Now, Could probably, you like, like, four. Do you gain weight on four, or are you chilling? If I can get up to five, then I would gain. If I'm like four, it's like maintaining. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's crazy. And I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think I'm a little different. I'm uh, basically constantly fucking moving throughout the day. I think genetically, probably just have a higher metabolism. Like all, like even my dad, he's a truck driver, eats fucking shit constantly. He's like still like. He's not like necessarily lean and muscular, but he's like he's not fat. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's right. still like <clears throat> in decent shape. Yeah, my brother's always been in good shape. Pretty much everyone in my family. So I think yeah. I definitely have maybe a little more of a, you know, a benefit of some decent genetics with metabolism. But yeah, I'm just constantly moving. Training has just been nonstop for 15 years. So, but. Uh, what do you think about – well, quick answering the question. I eat, like, 2,800 calories, but yeah. that's because I'm on prep. But normally I'm eating, like, thirty five to 4,000 when I was running and lifting and stuff. Yeah. But what do you think about, like, a big thing now is, like, oh, it's just genetics. Like, do you believe in that or is it – I think it's a piece, but it's not everything. It's like, a, yeah. I mean, you could have the best genetics in the world and be a fat piece of shit. 100%, like, yeah. Like, if you're not working or if you're not <coughs> training – what is good genetics? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like to say, Oh, my genetics are bad. That's definitely just like an, an, an excuse. Yeah. But there's also people, trust me, I've been in the gym a long time. See a lot of people come and go. Some people come into the gym and they just respond better. Like, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to like whoever's watching, listening. <clears throat> Some people, they respond better than others. It's uh, just yeah, I like to think of it too. Like <laughs> you look at like uh, like you guys are like built like like you guys are like like pit bulls. Like you guys are freaking you know you guys are slapped <laughs> together. Like you guys are slapped together. I'm like that. I'm like like I'm tr I'm like in the medium. I'm like still like kind of there, but I'm not like I'm like I think dogs are a good rep representation of genetics. Like there's dogs that are fat. There's dogs that are fast. Yeah. And there's dogs that are just jacked. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of weird to think of it that way, but I think humans are the same. But I also think that like humans can control that. You, yeah. You know, like, but I think you can change like, it. For yeah, sure. you can change it. But I think genetically, we all have a background in which. One hundred percent. I mean, you know, it'd be like <clears throat> saying like, ah, oh, I can do what Thor can do. Yeah. No, motherfucker. Thor, That's like a like, real life Viking. Like Thor, Thor, like the fucking mountain from Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. I mean, but pound for pound, though, let's say if you kind of trained how he trained, <coughs> took the supplements that he takes, you don't think eventually you'd I be able to kind of... he's only using creatine. Test <laughs> primo. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I mean, well, no, it's like, yeah, I get what you're, I get what you're saying, but it's just clearly... That motherfucker has something we don't, you know. There's people who have better endurance. There's people that can build muscle. Like, there's just, like, if you look at bodybuilding, different muscle bellies. Like, everyone has different, like, insertions. Like, that'll make your body look different. They could all be working the same, but, like, there's only one Ronnie Coleman. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, like that nice. motherfucker was just built different. Like I don't <laughs> care what anyone says. Sure, whatever drugs he had taken, I can tell you right now. <clears throat> I bet you he wasn't taking the amount that guys are nowadays. Nah. And he could fucking win Olympia next year, I think, like back in his prime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like his physique was the sickest I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even look real. I feel like that's like kind of like what you're saying is an exception for like bodybuilding. But I feel like if it's a sport to where like you're going against someone, <laughs> like any type of like combat sport or even like powerlifting, in my opinion, I feel like like one person solely off of like kind of where they came from or like their genetics <coughs> or just like d their genetics in general i feel like that's not really going to be the ultimate de um like determiner of yeah, yeah. if they're going to be like but i i honestly i remember I forgot what was was it you that said it you said like some people are just going to be like better you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, a, I, just, yeah. I, di I disagree. I'm gonna be honest. I just yeah, disagree. I, I feel like if you're just 100 percent all the time, always willing to go like the extra mile, I feel like hard work and dedication could out outmatch just like natural talent or skill. You yeah, know what I mean, 100%. I don't know. Well, I think like that's a true statement there. Like if you have passion behind something, yeah, and that other person could be more talented than you but you're truly passionate and you wake up every single day when they <laughs> set you know snooze their alarm yeah like, you might be better than them one day it might take time like i always think too like you look at those like freak athletes in high school that would just like like you know like get drunk the night before and then score like 100 touchdowns the next day like yeah. john jones yeah like yeah. like crazy people like that it's like yeah you know like they're freak of they're freaks of nature but you know if you work hard enough, you might not be on their level, but you could come pretty damn close. Yeah. Um, Does this make you upset? Yeah, I was just looking at them. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about my little chicken, bland chicken and potatoes after this. I hope the homies Dude. don't get mad at me for eating oh, this. Oh, man, right he's now. back again, guys. Back again. This <laughs> time he's got Shake Shack. <laughs> it's a little healthier than the noodles. I think so. I forgot my soda, but it's all good. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. No, I think, um, you know, hard work can beat talent when talent's not working hard. Yeah. That whole, right. like, cliche saying, like. But what if the hard work is working? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're saying what if the hard worker is, is working talented. harder than the talented like guy? way harder. Y yeah. Like, I, I think, mean, I think you can. hours every day. I think you can catch up. I think you can make up a difference, but. Again, if that talented individual works just as hard, like you, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna beat you. Well, no. well, think about it this way: Did you see uh, DJ Metcalf's uh, diet. Yeah, I heard about it. I think he's he's like, like trolling McDonald's and shit. Oh, is, was he trolling? No, I don't know, dude. dude like, he said he, he eats like, like three too. packs of candy a day. That's his diet. And then he has a meal. Yeah, I so don't know. So one meal and like three packs of candy. Yeah. It's tough. He could be trolling, but if he's not, there's a good comparison. Like, dude <coughs> doesn't give a shit about his nutrition, and he just – he's a beast. He's just faster than everyone, bigger than everyone. Yeah. I mean, you look at me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facts. Yeah. I, I, I eat like shit, and I'm like fucking peak human. You know what I mean? Pure. Eight pack. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get better. Human <laughs> performance. Yeah. Eight pack. Oh, man. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, you know. It's definitely one of those things like you don't want to like you don't hurt like you don't want to look at yourself and make genetics a reason you do or don't do something. Yeah. Like whatever. We're all dealt the hand we're dealt. That shouldn't change like the work that you're willing to put in to get to the goal that you have. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to to me. It's like whatever. Like fuck genetics. Like if you want to if you want to attain a certain goal, you'll figure out a way to do it if you yeah. really want it. I think, too, uh, one thing I really wanted to say on this podcast is so with social media, people right now in the fitness industry, you follow somebody because you want to look like them a lot of times. Like, that's what the thing is now. Well, the way I like to portray it is, yeah, I might look good, but I'm not really putting that out there. It's just like my main meant like my main personality. It's more of I know that we all have the potential to work hard. I know that we all have the potential to uh, run a marathon, you know, lift weights and, you know, just become a better version of yourself. That's what I try to put out there because every fucking person 
on this planet is capable of doing that. Um, and, you know, even with like when I went to L.A., I met this uh, kid out of a pop up, came up to me. Um, he he was disabled, could barely walk, came up to me and he was like, hey, you know, I wanted to meet you and stuff. And, you know, I got a picture with him and I got talking with him and and the kid is going to do a uh, Spartan race. I think he actually did a Spartan race and he's disabled and barely can walk. But it's like in times like that, it's like genetics don't fucking matter. It, what really matters is like your desire and your heart to go chase a goal. Like the kid, like he could barely walk and he's out here doing more than half the people that are just like chilling in life, just yeah. going through the motions. It's yeah. like it puts it into perspective that like, dude, just fucking do it. Sign up for stuff and and chase your fucking dreams because you yeah. only you only have so many opportunities. <clears throat> yeah, the whole paralysis by analysis i feel like that like plagues so many people it's like yeah. if you want to if you want to really do something like just just just, fuck just start you know what i mean like you got to start and like <clears throat> that might be like signing up for the the spartan race or it might be like signing up for the powerlifting meter maybe it's just even signing up to join a gym like you like if you want to look a certain way like take take a step to get there don't just be like yeah i want to do this or you're on instagram like fucking hoping and praying like that you just wake up one day jacked and tan like yeah, um, yeah. You know I, what I, mean? I think uh i think too like one thing i learned is like i oh, should i forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um you said yeah yeah, yeah jacked but it's and like tan. I, I was I, we've, we've talked about it a bunch of times on the podcast like just kind of getting started it's kind of how you said you just literally were like fuck i'm gonna sign up for this bodybuilding show and figure it out yeah so yeah. I feel like if there's like a takeaway from that, that little bit there, it's like, you know, just t take the leap, you know, yeah, figure it out. Yeah. And See what you're made of. And that's the thing. I think, like you said, paralysis by analysis, being so scared to do something when what's the worst thing that can happen? You yeah. Fail. You yeah. fail. Who the yeah. fuck cares? Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, even if like I get it, if you have a family or you have all this money on the line and stuff like, OK, like. It yeah. makes sense. But if you're young and you have nothing like to lose, like, dude, take your risk now. I think that's my biggest thing that I'm learning from everybody that I've talking to, like even from you guys, like, um, and traveling places is everybody says, dude, take risks when you're young. Yeah. You have nothing to lose. Like no, yeah. like literally nothing. Like, Now's the time. You don't want to have like kids. 30, 40, 50 and regret. And be like, Man, wish I would have did that. Wish I would have tried that. Yeah. Imagine, like, imagine living your life and being like, Man, what if I would have actually signed up for that? Yeah. What would what would my life look like now? Yeah, like I mean, crazy one, shit. Yeah, one one decision can literally like change like the entire like trajectory of your life. Yeah. It's like it sounds like so fucking corny, but like, dude, it's so true. no, yeah, it's so true. Like signing up for like a competition of some kind. Who knows who you meet in that competition? Who knows what that leads to, and then what that can lead to? Like these little pieces just all of a sudden start falling into place, and it kind of comes back to like the getting lucky thing. You're not going to get lucky unless you put yourself out there to, like, possibly fall into some opportunities. Like, and then who knows where you end up. Like, take a little risk, especially at a younger age. If you guys are a younger audience, like, take a little risk. You know, have a little fun in the process. Enjoy the process. And, like, I think you'll be surprised at where you end up when you actually are willing to take risks and work hard. Yeah. That's, dude, 100%. You hit that on the nail. Like, I literally, like, looking back at – how I used to be because like I, I like to reflect um, looking back at how I, I used to live my life was I had a girlfriend for five years she's a very nice girl um, but I didn't take any risks I was kind of just content I wanted to work a nine-to-five and just have a family and live like a normal person and then I was like you know what I feel like I have I, I kind of want to accomplish more than that like maybe like like build something bigger than myself and that's when I started everything. And now, granted, I still don't know where I'm going to go with it, but I'm taking the right steps to get there. Yeah. So I think that's what I learned is just being like, you know, fuck it, fuck it mentality and just chase your dreams. I like that. Who, who cares? I think that's a good spot to end it. Yeah. Fuck it mentality. Fuck it. <laughs> chase your dreams, man. No, for sure. It's like we're laughing about it, but it's like the real, it's like the real deal. Like got to do that. So. You know, I feel like a lot of people will be able to take a lot from this. You know what I mean? Like, you're probably a lot 
uh, you know, you're the age of a lot of like people watching this. So, you know, it's cool to kind of see you, you know, I've only known you for like the last year or so, but even in that short amount of time, like, man, I feel like he's like doing a lot, continues to do more. It's cool to see. So yeah. we appreciate you coming on the podcast. I'm sure we'll get you back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, part You're, two. Yeah, definitely got to do a part two, maybe after the bodybuilding show. Yeah, throw back some whiskey. <laughs> yeah, a little, <laughs> hopefully a celebratory. Yeah, yeah, that'll be sick. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing how you do with that, and we'll definitely get you back. But, uh, yeah, you got anything to end this with, Julius? You D- still got a just, mouthful, just guys. just finished it. Perfect timing, <laughs> yeah. man. <laughs> when you want to do something – do it <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly. shit all right guys that's actually it we appreciate you tuning in listening watching make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel subscribe to the the spotify apple Podcasts, all the things check out nathan we'll tag his instagram tiktok all of his things and uh we'll see you in the next one that was good money <laughs>